We sent messengers as bringers of good tidings and warners so that mankind will have no argument against Allah after the messengers. And ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. Assalamu alaikum. Well, now that's more like it. I like this. This is looking good. You guys are all attentive and ready to go, mashallah. When we were talking about the prophets and their signs, their proofs, the things they had in common, and the things that they had different. So then I was thinking about how many prophets there are. So many. Maybe more than 100,000. And how many messengers? These are the ones who have the books. And they said maybe more than 310, more than that, coming with scriptures, we call scriptures. But the only one that still is today, like it was at the time, is the one that came with the last messenger, Muhammad, and it's called what? What's that scripture? Quran. And that's what I want to talk about today. But I want to talk to you about it in a special way, because in the Quran, the first thing that came told us a lot of things in the first few words, and there's a very important message coming to us. So I need your help on this, so pay close attention, okay? All right. Now, we know the story that comes with the Muslims, right? That Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is in a cave in the mountain of light called Jabal Nur, right? It's Ramadan, it's nighttime, right? He's worshiping Allah and worshiping Allah. And what happens? All of a sudden, an angel comes in the cave with him. I bet he was scared, what do you think? I would be afraid. And the angel grabbed him. Who is the angel? Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabriel, they call him in English, yeah, Gabriel, Jabril. And he grabbed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he pulled him like, you know, close to him, like, and then he let him go. And what did he say to him? Iqara. Remember, we're going to say what he said in Arabic because that's the language it came. They didn't speak English back then because there was no English. Iqara. Now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, he says, no, I'm not of those people who do that. He grabbed him again and he pressed him. He let him go and he said, Iqara. And again, Prophet Muhammad is telling him, but I don't know, you know, how to read, write, stuff like that. I'm not educated like that. Then the angel grabbed him again and pressed him to him again and he released him again and he said, Iqara, bismi rabbika ladi khalaqa, khalaqa insana min alaqa. Ikara wal rabukul akram. Allah di alamu bil kalam alam al insanam alam yalam. Yeah? Did you know that? How many of you already knew this? Raise your hand if you already know that. You know that too, don't you? Yes. This is Surah, Surah what? Alaqa. Al Alaqa. First, I'll start with the word Ikara. Ikara means recite. Some people think it means read, but actually the best word is recite. Why? Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never did read. So why would the angel tell him to do something he doesn't do, right? And the recitation is what the Quran is called. Iqara is the way of telling somebody to do Quran. Qara'a. Qara'a. And this is the root. So now we understand whoever does Iqara, that's somebody telling you Iqara. And when you do it and recite it, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, that's what? Recitation. So that's Quran. <laughs> Makes sense? Yeah. Well, then I thought some more about this. I said, hmm, Iqara, Iqara, recite, recite, recite in the name of your Lord who created, he created, Allah created 
the human being from what? Alaka. Alaka. From Alaka. Because inside of your mother, in a special place inside of your mother called the Raham, or place of mercy, this is Raham, nice word, mercy place inside of your mother, that's where you started out. You were just little, so small, nobody could see you even with a microscope. Just tiny, tiny, tiny. And just at the minute when you were conceived inside your mother, you made <coughs> a, on her, like connected, and makes a teeny little hole, and all of a sudden it forms a clot of blood, and you begin to grow, and grow, and grow. And that thing is called an alaka. What you used to be, what I used to be, teeny tiny. Can you believe I was little? No, I'm so big. <laughs> but we were all little like that. And we were alaka like that. Now here's something interesting, very interesting. Nobody knew back at the time of the Quran coming, they didn't know what's alaka. They didn't know that the human being is so small, but they couldn't see it. That it's shaped like what? It's shaped like the thing in the water which gets on you called a leech, and that's called alak in Arabic. It forms a blood clot. That's also called alak in Arabic. And what else? Anything that's hanging, clinging, is called alak. Do you have a refrigerator at your house? Do you have a refrigerator? Do you have any magnets hanging on the refrigerator? Yeah, we have magnets all over, you know, like this and that, letters and words and stuff. And when you have all that stuff hanging, you can think, this is what? Clinging must be alaq. Got it? Okay. Well, then I thought about some more. How could somebody 1,400 years ago know about alaq inside of a mother when nobody even knew about this? But Allah said it, that he created us all from alaq. Then he continued and he said, recite in the name of your Lord who is so generous who taught men, human beings, how to use a pen and taught them what they didn't know. Hmm, now what does that mean? So I asked some of the people that have a lot of knowledge and I like to sit with them and ask them questions and that's a good thing to do, by the way. If you want to know, go to the people with knowledge, right? And ask them. And they said, don't you know who was the first one to use the pen? And he used to write down what Allah taught him to write? I said, I don't know. They said, Idris, alayhi salam. We say alayhi salam because he's a prophet, okay? Idris, alayhi salam. I didn't hear you. Uh, Idris? There we go, cool. You got it. All right. Now, then I found out his name in the English language is Enoch. Enoch. Uh, don't ask me where that came from. <laughs> But that's what they said, Enoch, anyway, Idris. And what did he write? Well, whatever he was inspired to write by Allah. And what did he tell the people? Whatever Allah wanted him to tell the people. Did they save it? Not really. However, I have some very old books in my library. I mean, old. How old? I don't know. But these books are made from older, older books, and they're called Apocrypha. Can you say Apocrypha? Apocrypha. Hmm. Okay. Apocrypha. It means hidden from the public. Because these books used to be, a long, long time ago, part of the Bible. And there's one that's called Idris. Idris 1 and Idris 2. And I looked at that and I said, hmm. But when I tried to read it, it didn't make a lot of sense. And then I asked some knowledgeable people, and they said, well, it's not authentic. It's just stuff people made up afterwards, so we don't really know. I said, okay, let that go. We'll move on to something else. And that's when I began studying the different languages of the scriptures to try to learn more about it. The only one that I could find and even till today, it's all there in the original language, is what? Quran, the recitation. 
So that made it nice for me to find at last place I could go and learn about these prophets from the last prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran. And the more I thought about this, the more I looked at it, it started becoming more clear to me. Many people ask me, they say, how did you get into Islam? And they think, oh, well, because you used to be a Christian, maybe you didn't like Christians or something, <laughs> and maybe you like Muslims more than Christians, maybe that's why. That's not true. No, it's not true. In fact, I still like Christians. There's lots of good guys out there. But what I like is being able to prove what I say. And there's so much proof from the Quran that I keep thinking must be the truth. What's really nice is when I read the Quran and it tells me about these prophets and tells me about the message that they used to have. It even tells me what they used to say, words that came from their mouths. Amazing. <laughs> Another prophet, another prophet that came, his name was Abraham. Abram is what it says in one of the books that I have, Abram or Abram, depending if you're from Texas. But who is that? Well, they said later his name became Abraham or Ibrahim. Anyway, the interesting thing about him is not so much his name, it's the interesting how he got to Islam. Did you know his father used to make the sticks and stones that people used to pray to? Do you remember when we talked about that? We talked about rocks, that people carved these stones and rocks, and then they prayed to those rocks and stones. Do you remember? Yes. Well, his father was the guy who made those. The big ones, though. And man, he made one that was so big, it was bigger than human beings. And if you saw it, you might be like, whoa, look at that, you know? And he made it look like people, or he made it look like different things. And they had so many statues and so many images of so, so many things, you know. But Abraham was a young boy, you know. He looked at it and he said, that doesn't work. Because he's watching his father, you know, look at he's doing this, doing that. Now, if he wants to, he can make the statue have a big nose. He can make it have big ears. He can make it have a big mouth. He can make it however he wants it. Yeah? So how could that be a God? I mean, if you can make it, how is it a God? And the people used to pray to these gods. In fact, they had a special building just for gods. They called it a temple. And in that temple, there's all these big statues and stone things and all that. You know what I mean? Abraham, he didn't like it. He told his father he didn't like it. And then his father told him, shh. Shut up. Why? Well, I think, because his father is going, hey, this is my job. I'm making money. Shut up. I'm, you know, I don't want to lose my job. I got a good position here. But one day, when the people were out celebrating something, doing something, they left the temple. Abraham, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, went in the temple. He went in, and he took a big hammer called a mallet. He had a big one, right? Bam, boom, bang, smash, crash, boom. He broke them. Did he break them? Big time. He broke them up into little teeny tiny pieces. A mess everywhere except one. The great, how do you know the story? Great, big, 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 big statue. He did. He left that big hammer right there, right beside the, by his hand, right? And he left. Now, when the people came back, were they happy? No. No way. Were they scared? Were they mad? They were angry. How angry were they? They were so mad. Who did this? Who did this to our gods? Who did this to our statues? Who? Who? Somebody said, you know, that boy of the statue maker, he's been complaining against our gods. Let's pay them a visit. And boom, boom. They went to the statue maker's house. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, where's that kid of yours? Took him back. They went to the temple. They took Abraham, alayhi salam, right in there. And they said, now look at this. Look. Hmm. Hmm. Well, what do you say? He said, why are you asking me? 
Why don't you ask him? He's the one with the hammer. Pretty cool, huh? And look what they said. This is the part I like best. The people said, we can't ask him because he can't hear and he can't speak. Now watch out. Watch out. Look at this. He can't hear and he can't speak. So what he said? So why do you worship him? Because if you need anything, you're going to a stone that you, you just told me he can't hear you. So why are you praying to him? You just said he can't speak, he can't answer you, so why are you praying to him? And they went, uh, duh, uh, that's a good question. Well, never mind that, we're mad, you know, and then they wanted him. And they were really mad, you know. Well, they decided what they're going to do. Now, there was a real bad king in those days, real bad king. He's so bad. Some people said his name is Nimrud, and I thought about this name, Nimrud. I wonder if the word rude comes from this, because he was sure rude, very rude. And I thought about it some more. Nimrud. Can you say Nimrud? Nimrud. Yeah, who cares? He's a jerk. Anyway, <laughs> Nimrud. What he did was so bad. He used to do horrible things. You know what he did one time? He was arguing with Ibrahim about something. It's mentioned in Quran, by the way, exactly what happened. Didn't you ever think about the one who argued with Haj Ibrahim? They called him Haj Ibrahim. Isn't that nice because he makes pilgrimage, you know. And how they argued about his Lord. And so Abraham, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, was saying, my Lord is the one who is giving life and he gives death. He's trying to explain who is the law because this man was claiming he was the law. He said he was God, you know. And so this dummy, uh, sorry, this man, Nimrud, the rude, he said, I can give life and I can give death. Watch this. So they brought some people. He said, kill those and let those people go. He said, you see, I just gave death and I gave life. Oh, that's nasty. He killed somebody for no reason, just to show off. Horrible? Rude. Super nimrud. Then what happened? I love what Ibrahim said next. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, said, Well, my Lord is the one who makes the sun come up in the east. So why don't you make it come up in the west? Now, in this way, Allah puts down those kind of people because they have no answer. Look at the first thing that happened with the breaking up the statues, huh? And look how Allah made it clear to them. Why are you speaking to statues? And anybody claim to be God, okay, make the sun stand still or make it go backward or make the moon pop out and go away, huh? And you can't do that. How are you God? Well, then one of my friends said, you know, a human being shouldn't say anything like that about themselves because we can't do anything. We can't. I can't move the sun. Can you? No. Can you move the moon? No. My friend said, can you even make a hair grow out of your face while we wait? I said, I don't think so. He said, you can't even do that. Then don't tell anybody you have any power because you don't have power. Only Allah has power, right? Well... That's not all that happened. That Nimrud guy, he persisted and he kept on going. Guess what happened? They said, we're going to burn up Ibrahim. He said, yep, we're going to burn him up big time. We're going to get the biggest, hugest, most gigantic fire of the world. So he said, I don't want a fire. I want a fire. They were going, huh? He said, big. They said, what do you mean? Like big, you know what I mean? So they threw everything they had in the fire. They threw in the, like, you know, the furniture, everything they had. <laughs> and throw it in. Toothpicks, it don't matter. Throw it in, throw it in. Until this fire got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it was a big fire. It was the worst kind of fire. And then what happened? 
The people throwing the stuff into the fire caught on fire and died. That's how bad it was. He said, now throw him in. But the people who tried to throw him into the fire, they were burning up. <laughs> and so Allah let them understand something, a new thing they invented called the catapult. And that's when you have something like this and you <laughs> like this. You see what I did? What? See that? Do it. Let me see you do that. Get your finger and go <laughs> like this. Go ahead. <laughs> so they put Ibrahim right on this and pull it down. <laughs> and you get it down like that and let it go. And it's aimed at the fire, by the way. <laughs> and <laughs> bam. And he went right into the fire. Right into the fire. But look what Allah said. It's in the Quran. You can read it. Allah said, Oh, fire, be cool. Not cold, just cool. So Abraham stayed inside that fire a long time. It didn't bother him. He's like walking around going, Hmm, nice fire you got. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. Why? Because I'm cool. <laughs> And so sometimes I tell the Muslims, I like to tell you guys too, we Muslims, we like to be cool. I don't think anybody is more cool than a Muslim. We're not hot and we're not cold. We're cool. We want to be cool in this life, cool on the day of judgment, and cool in the next life. This is a good lesson for us too. Think about this and see how it fits in your mind. In this life, Sometimes you get upset, you get angry. How do you feel, hot or cold? Hot, really hot. You get mad. You start to feel like, I'm hot. I am so hot. I am really, really, really hot. Now, our prophet, Muhammad, وسلم, said when you feel that hot, he said that's the devil running through your body like your blood. What is it? The devil running through your body like your blood. And if, what's the devil made out of, remember? Fire. fire. Smokeless fire. So that's why when you get angry, shaitan makes you get hot. You start getting really hot. I'm getting hot. I'm getting, and but Prophet Muhammad Sassam said, whenever you get angry and you're standing up, what should you do? Sit down. And also, you get hot like that, make wudu. What does wudu when we wash? You know, we wash our hands, we wash our face, we wash all over ourselves. And we do that so many times every day, even before we pray, five times a day, washing, cooling down. So we're always cool. Cool, cool, cool. Take it easy. Don't get upset. Well, for right now, though, let's say what we always say at the end of something or the beginning of something. When we greet people, we say, Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be unto you and Allah's mercy and his blessings. And that's how we end each one of our little programs. And we ask Allah to always keep us in this way and make it easy for us and show us the message of his prophets. Amen. <laughs>